what I'm astounded by in this film, not only is the accuracy, or at least what seems to be accuracy of the truth, but the, the fictionalizing of that. And I'm curious about if you considered Steve Jobs at any point to be a fictional character or compared him to fictional characters that you've seen in the past. You know, I, I don't... I don't think like I would compare him to a fictional character, or but I think that the mythology of Steve Jobs, um, over time, will only become more bastardized. Um, I, it, it, you know, one of the things that Josh said to me, you know, we talked early on about, you know, is it too early to make this movie, um, and and Josh said, you know, the myth of Steve, the good and the bad, is going to just get, it's going to grow. Um, and, and that's what happens with stories. They become more glorious and they become embellished over time. And I think the fact that we were able to make this movie when we made this movie um, and the way that we made this movie, you know, allowed us to get as close to the truth as we could get right now. Um, and, and I think that time is only going to get people further away from the truth of his essence and who he is. Was that something you thought about while making the movie, that you wanted this to live as a milestone in this history that's going to kind of spiral out of control as, as we I mean I it. certainly didn't I thought of this as and I would approach any movie and I think Ashton did on another level as well which was this was a character what's his arc what's the drama what's the conflict you know what are the big super ideas in this movie he had a very kind of almost Shakespearean arc to his real life he was parents were poor like the peasants he was they he grew up thinking he was sort of more than them he he sort of not more than them, he loved them but you know he met sort of a, s a smelly band of guys and and then got into the into the palace and was sort of the heir apparent but not seen as legitimate and there was all this sort of palace intrigue to get him out and then he spends 10 years sort of in limbo and, and, and sort of comes back and takes care takes everybody out and sort of rules I mean to me those are the big ideas you know uh, I think Steve Jobs is, is a gray character it'd be easy to make him you know this m mythic person who changed the world but there's a dark side to him and he does bad yes. things uh, how important was it to, to show that side of him and how much could you show were, were you ever at risk of, of painting him in a bad light well I think his flaws are what make him so human and you see these keynote speeches now and to think back about how he was young and frustrated and wanting so badly to prove what he was trying to prove to people who didn't have the language to even understand what he was saying is is what we could relate to yeah, I think we'd like to sanitize our heroes. Um, but I think that, you know, I was definitely afraid while we were making the film that we were exposing too much of that. And I kept, go I kept going to Josh and going, you know, is he likable? He's got to be likable. He has to be likable. Is he likable? And, you know, and he rides that fine line. Uh, and I think that if you were on the wrong side of him, he was very unlikable. And if you were on the right side of him, he was very generous. Um, and, I, and, I, and I think that dichotomy is what made him, gave him the capacity that he had and, and that he cared so much about the outcome that he was willing to be blunt um, and, and say either something was great or that it was crap.